you got it on her own. Well, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> it never, nothing ever happens in ones for me. So I have decided that from now on, when something breaks, when something goes wrong, I'm just going to sit down and breathe and say, okay, hold on because you've got two more things coming because just, it's just like, it's never just one thing with me. It's the weirdest thing. And, um, I'm not thinking the universe hates me anymore. I'm trying not to, trying not to go there. I mean, it's stuff, you know, it's, it's RV stuff. So first I got back from New Zealand had to get my front brakes done. I kind of, I knew that was coming and, uh, I was going to get it done before I went to New Zealand and I was like, nah, I'd rather wait. And so I knew that was coming. Not a big deal. I did not expect to cost $900. I did not expect to have to spend all day in the brake shop because I got there at eight o'clock and they were like, we have to order the parts and they won't be here till two. So, um, you know, a whole day, you know, I mean, I was in my rig, um, and I got to work. So not a huge deal, but just an inconvenience. Good time to get caught up on my patron postcards yep some levels of patrons get postcards surprise postcards from my travels and i picked a bunch up in quartzite i thought it would be fun so gonna get these in the mail so so look in your mail for them at the uh, at the postcard level so yeah getting ready to send them out and just running a lot of errands today waiting on and the then of course postcards. going to get sadie who is so good Look at her. This is, we have our morning routine now. She just hangs out and has some me time, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to get her. I had to have the fuel pump replaced, which just, that was kind of out of the blue. I mean, since October, it's been fine. And so that was another $900. And then yesterday, my electric, well, not just yesterday. So three mornings ago, two or three mornings ago, my furnace went on. It's been cold at night. And my, my, uh, panel showed that my battery was going down to like 11.4, 11.5. And I'm like, that's very strange because it never goes even all, even in the morning with, you know, nothing running all night and with no solar going in all night, it doesn't ever go below maybe 11.9, but for it to go below 11.4, you know, and I'm kind of thinking that my batteries might be damaged because of the issue I had before I went to New Zealand. All right, so here's the story. Before I went to New Zealand, I was doing some routine maintenance on my RV. I took my RV into the tire shop because I wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong with my tires because I didn't want to come back to flat tires. I was t leveling off my battery water, making sure my batteries looked good, the water was filled. And while I was down there, I decided to clean the terminals. So. I cleaned the terminals and then all of a sudden I started having all these problems with my batteries. And so I went into a local battery store in the town that I was in, in Pahrump, Nevada, the, uh, an interstate, all state ba battery. They were awesome. I had a video and I can't find it and I figured I'd just reshoot this, but they were awesome. They took the time to sit with me and troubleshoot. I told him everything that was going wrong. The guy at the desk called the guy in the field and he tried to help me troubleshoot it. I had my multimeter out and I was testing all the different terminals to see if I could figure out what was wrong. Basically what I thought at the time is that the cable that connects the two batteries, the one, just the, the, the one straight cable that connects the two batteries, and I'm not going to get into all the details about it, but there are cables that come from other places, the electrical on the outside, and then there's a, a cable that connects the two batteries. And what I thought was my multimeter, multimeter reading on that cable was wrong. Um, I thought that that was, oh, actually, no, what happened is um, I changed out that cable because it kind of fell apart when I was, it just came apart. It was broken. So I put, I had an extra one and I put an extra one on it and then I didn't think the multimeter reading was right. So they spent a lot of time troubleshooting it with me. What they finally decided is that I just needed a new battery cable that even the one that I put on it, which I thought worked, uh, was fine. They said, no, it, it, um, you probably need a new battery cable and you can just go to the local, um, auto parts store and get a new battery cable. And so that's what I did. And it seemed fine until now.
So they've it's been running probably only on partial cells for a while. So I kind of expected it, but for it to drastically go that low, I'm like, something is wrong. So I went in, um, moved, you know, cleaned off some of the um, terminals and moved things around to see what was going on. And it was fine. It's been fine. Except now, the last couple of days, my solar, my reader has been floating from like nine o'clock in the morning until after dark, meaning that my battery amps are showing 14.7, which is way too high, and it's showing like a trickle charge going in, and it's just floating charge. It's not putting any more in. And for two days, it's been showing, well, one day in particular, it was like 14.7 all day, and I'm like, something's wrong. Even when the sun was going down, it was like 6 o'clock, it was still showing 14.7, and it was still showing floating. So I'm like, okay. Okay, I want to interject here, and I want to interject here because I want to share this with those of you who are new on the road or are coming on the road. I realized later I do this every single spring. I am so used to not seeing my levels get so high so early or so late because the days are so much shorter. So while there was an issue with my battery and we'll get to that in a minute, the fact that it was floating by nine o'clock in the morning isn't really that odd considering I'm getting a lot more sunshine and I'm in the desert and it's full sun. So just something for me to be aware of now every year and probably in the fall I'll be like what's wrong with my solar why is it not 14 9 at, at 9 o'clock in the morning so uh, if you have a reader like I do and you are um, kind of monitoring your solar input and output yeah a lot of OAG and uh, off-road activity here but if you are monitoring that just be aware of the seasoned the changes of the seasons and how that's going to affect your readings and what you're getting in your solar. Okay, back to our story. Then yesterday, it was doing that again. I woke up in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, it's showing 14.7. It should not be that high first thing in the morning. No no heat or anything. And then, um, so, oh, so I decided to mess around with the battery again yesterday to see, you know, is it a connection issue? What's going on? I've heard there's a bad rat problem here, um, here where I parked my rig. Um, and it's eating wires, and so that's on my mind. So I'm just like looking around at everything, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm getting a spark on one of the negative terminals. I, I think that's normal because I didn't unhook the positive. Um, and that one terminal seems to be doing some screwy things. So I did that, and then what happened? I lost all power. My, my uh, inverter went out. I lost, now I don't even remember what happened. It was just weird. Bunch of weird stuff. So all my power went out. Um, it sounded like a breaker flipped. That's what happened. I was out there, you know, screwing on the terminals and it sounded like a breaker flipped. So I went and I did all my breakers, um, redid all my breakers to try to reset everything. Nothing, nothing would turn on. And I'm like, what the hell? I lost all power. Something is seriously broken. And I'm sitting here and all of a sudden the lights turn on. And I'm like, what? And I'm like... The refrigerator starts beeping, the furnace goes on, and I'm like, this is really strange. But my reader is showing, I don't remember what it was showing, crazy stuff. So I'm like, okay, freak stuff. I'm going to go back to work. So plug in, because I'm trying to get a video done during all of this. So I plug my computer back into my inverter, and my inverter goes out. It won't work. It just won't work. And um, Still stuff is really weird. I don't even remember at this point. I should have filmed in the moment, but uh, I never do. I have to get through stuff and then talk about it. Um, so, but anyway, the inverter went out. I'm like, I can't work without an inverter. So I, I'm with a friend and she's giving me all kinds of people to call. And, but I'm like, you know what? I'd rather just go to Discount Solar and Quartzite. They installed the system. I've been there for a couple of things. I trust them, even though it's a five hour drive. And, um, so I called them and made an appointment and then, you know, I'm still kind of tinkering with things, still trying to troubleshoot shoot things myself and, um, just weird stuff like my radio in the front. Can you see it? It's been like that ever since I can't turn it off. Even, even if I flick it between engine and house, it stays like that. It won't, it won't turn off. That light's been on all night. Um, the refrigerator, it's weird. Like at one point, the light, like none of the lights would work, but the refrigerator was working or none of the lights would work and the inverter light was on or nothing else was on but the water pump light. 
so now I'm kind of thinking, because this morning everything seems almost fine. My inverter's on. I'm charging something. My battery is showing 12.2, 12.1 with 4.5 amps of solar going in, which is where it should be. Nothing's turning on and turning off. I mean, literally, like, things were turning on and turning off. One thing would work and one thing wouldn't. So I might have a short, you know, I'm tempted to just, this is, I'm tempted to just sit here and, like, say, okay, everything is fine. I'm, I don't need to take it in, but um, I like discount solar and I'm going to be starting to head north soon and if my if it and it might be my batteries I tested my batteries though yesterday during all of this with everything hooked up though with the solar hooked up maybe I should have unhooked the solar and tested them it's probably my batteries um because I tested the batteries with everything hooked up and each battery was showing um like 6.4 and like 13 point something together so very healthy range for golf cart six volt batteries um but again it was during the day and the solar was on and everything was plugged in i should have i should have unhooked everything so i still want to go there even if it is the batteries i'm going to switch out to either agm or lithium we'll uh see i also kind of want them to check the wiring i also think i'm going to go ahead and replace my inverter uh it's been acting up for a while and it might have a big draw. I think it does. I think the inverter itself has a big draw. So anyway, that is a, uh, that was a long seven minutes, but this is the reality of RV life. I just wanted to talk through what's going on with my electrical, talk through how I troubleshooted it. I mean, literally all I did is go in there and unhook the cables and uh, clean them off, even though they didn't really need it, check the water, made sure the water levels were good. Um, I mean, I, I looked underneath the battery um, thing where the wires go to see if I could see where anything was chewed or disconnected. I couldn't see anything. Um, and it, everything looks like it's working fine now, but it wasn't working fine for a couple of days. I mean, something was stuck. I don't know. Maybe it got reset overnight. I'm not going to take any chances. So, um, I'll tell you, I'll let you know where I'm going to drive, uh, to, uh, Arizona today. I'll let you know what happens during that process, what they find, what I, what it costs me. <laughs> All the, so here we are. This is probably, uh, well, I'm guessing if, at least if I get another invert, it's going to be another thousand. So just a great example of within a month, I have dumped potentially here, $3,000. We'll see into my RV, but at least the 2000. So um, this is just the stuff that you have to plan for. This is why you have an emergency budget, even when you go to New Zealand. Yeah. So, all right, let's hit the road. There's water rising in the basement. I'm too afraid now to go and face it. I tell myself that it'll work. Till I'm hungry, a couple of years I ought to be fun on my own. And what are you doing, little girl? Okay, so I spent an entire day driving to Quartzsite, Arizona. It was about a five hour drive. Went to my appointment at Solar, no, at Discount Solar in Quartzsite, who is my favorite solar place. They installed my solar. And you'll never guess what it was. Some of you who are smarter than me probably already figured it out, <laughs> but not me. I had to drive five hours to my favorite place to find out my battery cables were loose. That's it, they were loose, yep. So I knew they were loose, but it seemed like every time I tightened the one terminal down, um, it I, like it wouldn't turn on. Everything would turn off. So I unscrewed it a little bit so that it was a little bit loose because that way it seemed to work. I know, I know. A lot of you who know, who know about these things are just rolling your eyes at me. I know. As long as I've been living in an RV and dealing with this, I should know this stuff by now, right? But 
hey, I learned all my lessons the hard way, and hey, I've got a beautiful drive down to Quartzsite. I ended up staying a few days, but uh, uh, sharing all this, you know, even my dumbest moments, <laughs> so that you can learn that uh, your battery cables cannot be loose. They shouldn't go like this, you know, in the terminals. They should be screwed all the way down. But like I said, when I screwed it all the way down, nothing worked. So they cleaned the cables for me. I tried to clean them with what I had. They used a Dremel tool. They really cleaned them. And that was it. Everything worked fine. They did also uh, replace the, I call it a jumper cable, the cable that joins the two batteries. My batteries are in series. So that jumper cable that I went and got at the auto parts store also wasn't thick enough. I needed a, uh, I think I got a 10 gauge and it needed to be at least an eight gauge. So they replaced that for me and everything is working great. I asked about replacing my um, inverter and they said that that would be a huge job, a thousand dollars or more because they'd have to rewire everything because I would want a bigger inverter that could handle more power um, because my, my inverter can't handle like a blender. Um, for example, I have a Ninja blender. It can't handle a Ninja blender. It doesn't have enough wattage to be able to handle that. And if I wanted to change out the inverter to a higher wattage, I'd have to rewire everything. They said, and that would be a big job and it costs a lot of money. So anyway, I drove five hours for them to change a, uh, a $10 cable for me and to troubleshoot it and tell me that it was just loose battery cables and also to clean my battery cables for me. And it cost me like 68 bucks or something like that. So, oh well, you know, oh well. Another lesson learned and another lesson for you. Like I've said since the beginning that sometimes I'm here to teach you what not to do. <laughs> oh well, so I hung out in Quartzsite for a few days. It was really pretty there. And then I went back up to Pahrump. We were sheltering in place after all, so I was mindful about how much I was traveling. And uh, that's where the story continues. Good girl. How's it going, good girl? Hi. I know. We just went for a walk, a long walk. What are you, what are you doing? Let me see that nose of yours. You're burying bully sticks. Hi. I gave her a bully stick, she came out and buried it, and then came inside to chew my shoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can't imagine how many tens of dollars are buried all over the desert. Huh, Sadie girl? She does go back and get them eventually, sometimes if we're still there. Sadie, look at me. Look at me. Sadie girl! My first rattlesnake. Yeah, he's right in camp. Thank God I saw it before Sadie did. I don't even know what to do about it. It's a small one. But I want it to go. Good.
No, it's coming my way. Seriously? What should I do? Throw rocks at it? What I don't want is it for it to go under my rig. I want it out of here. Crap. Where'd it go? It's coming right toward me, stupid thing. Well, I was driving away because it went underneath my rig and I couldn't see it. And I didn't know what it was doing. There was a box underneath my rig with uh, Sadie's toys in it and I was afraid it was in the box. And I was also afraid it was just luring, uh, lurking under there. Uh-uh, Sadie girl. So I was leaving and as I backed up, I realized I ran over it. And it's dead. But part of it's gone. I've been inside on the phone. Something came and took part of it. Huh. Damn it. <laughs> Do you sense danger? I've never seen you sit on that chair before. And now we have a rattlesnake. We had a rattlesnake and now you're sitting on the chair? <laughs> you okay? Did something scare you? Are you okay? Let me make sure you don't have any bites. Did something scare you? Sadie girl? Did something scare you? Snakes suck, huh? We're leaving soon. What do you see? Yeah, what do you see? She heard the camera actually and went crazy that we saw a coyote come through our camp right through there last night. She saw it before I did. Oh, look at her. Oh, maybe the coyote. I suspected the coyote might be back. It just stopped and looked at us. Is a coyote there? You see a coyote? It's been a weird time here in the desert. Rattlesnakes, coyotes, I never see coyotes. I hear them. I never see them. And it literally, like, can you see not that bush right there? Not that bush right there, but the one, like, the third one back. It was right there. And at first I thought it was a dog until the sun hit it, the setting sun, and it just stopped and stared at us. And I got up, made sure I had a good hold on Sadie. Didn't want her running off after it. It would have eaten her. Hi, huh, Sadie girl. Yes. She's on guard. Yes, you're, smart. you're so smart, huh? Glad you didn't see the rattlesnake. All right, finally saying goodbye to the desert. I have been here four or five months. I'm done. I'm hitting the road, heading to hopefully greener pastures. Think of Flagstaff. I'll let you know when we get there. Sadie's <laughs> she's doing good. She resists coming in a little bit. And when I get her in, she jumps right up here. So that's the best place for her to get less sick. Let's go, Sadie. You wanna hit the road? Okay, so what did you think? There was a lot in this video, and as promised, I still have some desert scenery, some amazing, beautiful things. I have some geocaching coming up. I actually started that video and then realized I couldn't fit the rattlesnake in there, and I had to promise you kind of the, the big, like, weird surprise thing. I don't know. It's, I, surprise is the wrong word, but uh, more stuff happening, and so I ended up putting, putting this video together, and uh, 
I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot more to come. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for being here and 120,000 subscribers I hit yesterday and I couldn't have done it, of course, without each and every one of you. So I appreciate all of you very much for helping me uh, keep my dream job. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.